of seniors and I'm wondering, do we care? Does, does this task force running out? Are we concentrating on something else? I think we are not giving that information out to the people. This is a, not a very good turnout. Four, we're going to have four meetings or five public hearings. And I know that that's only because you have to have public hearings in order to do what you're doing. So we're not giving the information out to the people all we're doing. So I hope that this task force will go back and as you meet, you'll take into consideration what I'm telling you. It's, it's very important. Very. I intend to spend the rest of my life dedicating it to seniors in San Antonio and Bear County. And I'm not going to give up for a minute. So, So I want to thank you. I know that you take time out of your busy schedule to go to meetings and so forth, but again, I'm asking you, go back, make sure that Ivy Taylor and all the council people know that we need to get this information out to people before anything is finalized or anything is done. And I thank you very much.
The thing that happened in our area, what happened with these uh, permanent deals to become lobbyists. In our area, I have here 262 properties that were taken over by eminent domain. Let me correct myself. It's not called eminent domain. It's acquisition to negotiation and or condemnation. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. Thank you very much. You know what was something I want to tell you real quick? When I went to a congressional hearing in San Antonio, they allowed you to speak your mind because we're allowed to speak. And you say the same thing. You're allowed to speak your mind until you are heard. This is very important. Oh, you're coming to my mind. We need more meetings like this so that we can all be heard and served.
to make our elected officials and other task force members accountable to the public. These town hall meetings would not be happening at all if those people had a voice um, their opinions and demanded that the public have a space to come and address the task force. So I just wanted to make that point. Um, I was at the public uh, town hall meeting yesterday, and I do appreciate the efforts being made um, to have Spanish translation and to have a PowerPoint in Spanish. Um, I am glad that they all understand the needs of the community in this area. Um, I'd like to ask you to take it one step further and release the draft report in Spanish. All of the, um, all of, a number of our members are bilingual, however, some of them are Spanish speaking only. I do not think that it is um, outside the realm of possibility for the city to understand that there are many community members who speak Spanish only and release that draft report in Spanish. Um, I think the city um, and the, the task force can do a better job of making this information public. Um, I went on the internet to look for the draft report, which I said was released in January. It was very difficult to find. It is not an accessible piece of information for community members. Um, so I think they all can do a better job of making that information available for everyone. Um, I read the draft report. Um, I was disappointed by the language within that draft report. The language treats the issue of displacement as something that is inevitable. Um, they want to compensate for people who are pushed out of their homes, and we say that these people should not be pushed out of their homes, that they have a right to stay in their homes. Please, I'll remind you for the translator to translate if you try to get over here. So, displacement is not inevitable, um, and we would like to see policy solutions, clear policy solutions that are going to keep people in their homes. Thank you. I'm a resident of District 1, and I live right up North St. Mary's, and we are also seeing some really interesting effects of what's happening. Um, so, in the interest of time, and to respect your uh, wise three minutes that you feel like you should have, um, I'll say that you should might want to break it down into recognize, act, and react. Recognize a few years ago the text of the was released about two high school students from the West Side who went on to Ivy League schools and came back in January because they couldn't afford to live. Because their parents and their grandparents didn't go to Ivy League schools. Their parents and grandparents still probably work at the Grand Hyatt, which, as I remind you, when there is still a boy pot, on the Grand Hyatt yeah. for their inability and their lack of appreciation for the beautiful people who clean that place, live on the west side, come over on Korea, trade down, and make everything nice and lovely for all of our visitors. Mm -hmm. And as Mayor Cisneros said, and the workforce developed in you a couple months ago, he recognized and he directly said that this city has been built on the backs of underpaid labor. In this article, and you know, I will give our people our cultural right to agree with one another and support one another in a vocal way by clapping and being heard. So understand that when you call these people river rats, mm. and you don't recognize our service industry for what it does for this town, you do not give them a proper place as people who sent their children to Yale and Stanford and were returned because not because they couldn't afford to go to school or because they couldn't afford to put clothes on their lap. Because they couldn't afford to live in Boston. Because they couldn't afford to live in these, these, these coast places that we want to send them that we keep saying education is the answer to. So on the, on the part of acting and reacting to these kinds of things, I would say that you put pressure, same kind of pressure, legislative pressure that you put locally and at the state level to make a livable wage in Texas. Yeah. Make a livable wage for all the people going to be married at nice tax incentives and I recognize the response and thank you for bringing that up in, initially, that there are things that we are bound by at state and federal level. Let's figure those things out and let's not have a lack of creativity and a lack of imagination because we can't work around these things.
because the town she elected were all the creative. Side. I 
church, went to school, is now um, not recognized by me or any of the other um, members that were raised in the 1970s, 1980s because um, of this kind of development. So I'm really interested in how the neighborhood empowerment zone is going to work so that my confidence can be aware as to how this diversity will impact them. So I don't know how it's gonna impact me as a homeowner and as a landlord in this, uh, in this, in this process. Thank you. Thank you. Was there anyone who did not speak, who had not an, did not have an opportunity to sign up because you came in late? Yes, ma'am. Would you tell us your name? <coughs> yes, uh, my name is Barbara Whit Howell, and I'm uh, both a, a neighborhood activist and a senior activist. And uh, the reason I wanted to come tonight was because, as Ms. Eckert said, uh, we both sit on the uh, City County Joint Commission on Elderly Affairs. And uh, the one out of every 4.5 people in this region are seniors. And because of that, I think that there should be a senior component, uh, a senior housing component as part of these discussions. Uh, as I read, and I was reading online the plan and I was reading your, the handout you gave, and I live in River Road neighborhood, and I've had five generations live there. Um, and we recently were the recipients of a 41-bedroom apartment complex on the old stables, if y'all are old enough to remember that, by a developer who, along with all of the developers up and down Broadway, have been the recipients of lots of our tax dollars and lots of abatements from our city-owned utilities, CPS, and uh, SAWS. Now, to me, it's, I mean, it's millions and millions per project, um, and it's just amazing if you look on the website and count up how much it is. And I think those dollars should, some of those dollars should be diverted to uh, our housing. Because if we, we do not want another, you know, landslide of buying out houses that happened, has happened a couple of different times in our city's history. But I really think we need to push those monies not just towards economic development of new housing. Because then, after a certain amount of time, those developers who get those uh, benefits are selling those buildings. That's happened now to two of those buildings. And it seems to me that the people who are paying those taxes, that have been paying those taxes, that are still paying those taxes, need to benefit from those taxes in a way that helps them in their homes. Thank you so much. Thank you. You didn't get a chance to sign in? Okay, I will um, just take two more. Please give us your name when you get to the microphone. Good evening. My name is Barbara McDonald. I live in the Alamo Domes Garden neighborhood, which was originally Denver Heights. I would just like to say that I'm sorry. Uh, I have been to so many of these meetings that uh, it's just unbelievable. Pastor Black used to say, we've been studied and studied and studied and studied enough. It's time for action. I appreciate the fact that this is a mayor's task force and was started whenever. Um, but it's always the same thing. You know, I always feel like there's a hidden agenda that we always find out about things last. I found out about the carnival coming to my neighborhood right on top of us a week before, when the city had years of planning for that. 
And so, you know, I, 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 I don't, I just don't understand sometimes how we can get left out. But I'm gonna talk about my community, my area. I live on the 50 yard line of the Alamo Dome. That neighborhood was started to have six phases. They stopped at the third one to be historically, politically, whatever you call it, correct, because they didn't want to mess up the neighborhood. I don't know where that came from when they put the Alamo down there. But they didn't want to mess up the neighborhood anymore. Our neighborhood has not been finished. It hurts my heart when I drive up by the new convention center with all the pretty trees and all the lights and all of that. And then I come up Montana Street and my neighborhood looked like, what is it? <laughs> you know, what is it? I have four or five people in my neighborhood who have taken their own money, their own time, and have redone beautiful houses. I have a vacation home inside, in front of my own property that's owned by a gentleman that came into my neighborhood. The city has never come up and said, hey, how can we help you? What will we help you do to help beautify this area? I have a neighbor that has taken one of these houses from the, uh, what's this, the Wheeling Courts, and he's having it moved onto a vacant lot that was burned down because of drug activity. He's having it moved onto my street. That's how you fill up vacant lots. You buy, the city can easily buy up houses and fill up vacant lots. You know, if a, if a person that can take their own money to do that, where does the city get these ideas from? Why can't the city think of something like this, rather than have my neighborhood had very on with all these vacant, 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 vacant lots? You know, it's totally unnecessary. So a task force, I don't know when y'all started or how y'all started, what your plans are, but I'm just tired. <laughs> you know, I only have 30 plus years left to live. And I really would like to see my neighborhood look like what's in. I be believe that it's people that's going to move into my area with their own money, own time, and own energy to make a difference. So whatever this task force takes back to, y'all have a meeting, what, tomorrow, or when, whatever, you know, be positive. Hear what everybody's had to say. We're just tired. Thank, Thank you, Ms. McDonald. Please give us your name, sir. My name is Jesus uh, Lopez, and I'm just here to let you know that yesterday y'all had a meeting in the West Side, and like my grandma, she wasn't able to attend. My aunts, my uncles were all surprised. Y'all live in the West Side. Mr. Rod Rado has been there for years. He should have known that he should have had a interpreter uh, in Spanish. The majority of the people didn't even understand what they were saying, and you were hot touching everybody. You didn't let nobody talk, like you're doing it now. So uh, the majority of the people weren't even there, and they were calling me, what happened to me, or what's going on? We can know, they're, they're doing what they want to do quick. He said, well, I can't walk me home. Can you take me to grandma's way in the east side now? I can't take you. Why? Because he knows what he's done. He, he works with banks. Um, hold on. You're going to put you to bite me. Um, he works with banks. There's a lot of people here that they know what they're doing. I know that lady over there, the one with uh, black and white hair, but uh, if she wants to talk real quick. That's all I wanted to let you know that this is a hush-hush meeting and trying to do it quick. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. Thank you, I'm Liz Franklin. I live over in Dignity Neighborhood Association. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Liz Franklin. I live over in Dignity Hill, and I want to thank the board for coming together and the patience that you exhibited, although we deserve it. But having said that, I was looking at the success measures, and my one, my one comment or question to the board would be to focus the funds with, under your success measures. It's all about housing, affordable housing, economic disparity and then all of a sudden here's our solution we're going to use funds raised and leveraged by the 2017 bond for, for fulfilling the goals outlined in this document that would be great if it's focused on those that need it i mean and i would like to see that the task force actively and aggressively work at that focusing those funds that you're going to ask us to vote on, that they go legitimately to those with the greatest need to really get the numbers up in your, in your success measures. Because if you do an even split, like is typical when I hear dialogue from the city, well, 
Everybody wants their cut, so your streets, we don't have any money left to get those fixed. Well, that's not necessarily true in one of the newer districts that hasn't had any streets go down in the last 30 years and has been moved off the list. I think you understand what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I'm asking the task force to do due diligence, extra and focus in a very tight shot group that that money 100% goes to the folks that most deserve it to get there. So thank you, that's all I have. Thank you. Hi, my name is Graciela Sanchez. I'm with the Esperanza Peace and Justice Center and I am a lifelong resident of San Antonio, starting at the west side. Um, and the Esperanza represents all of San Antonio, not just any one neighborhood. Um, I wanted to make sure, again, for, um, for many of you who weren't at yesterday's meeting, Esperanza submitted a couple of pages worth of questions, and I hope that this is online as well, so that people know the questions we asked, and so that also, again, the, the committee, the staff, is held responsible to answering those questions, because yesterday we weren't able to even ask those questions, and it seems like we've run out of time again to ask and answer those questions. I, I thought this was going to be a Q&A where we actually also got answers. Um, and there was also that other uh, report that the Right to the City Committee also submitted on February 6th that was not incorporated into any of the information on the Planning Department's uh, website. Just like Ms. McDonald and so many of you have already said, we already are the victims of this displacement and the city of San Antonio staff and the developers and the lobbyists that represent them are working really hard to push us out. You can see it, just read code compliance. I mean, CDBG monies go to hire at least four code compliance officers. And those folks come into our neighborhoods and say, you're home, you're home, you're home, and continue to harass people. And then all of a sudden, people don't own those homes anymore. And then the homes are no more, and they're vacant, as Ms. McDonald said. I know that that's exactly what's happening on the west side as well. But we know that the developers are ready to come in. The peanut factory that everybody talks about in the west side, which had been vacant. Um, I was excited to see it go up. Well, the city gave it incentives for students, but you know what? The, the, smallest, the smallest room uh, bed, uh, apartment costs for 410 square feet. It will cost you $859 to live there. That's not student housing. I don't know any student that can pay that much money. And ultimately, as we raise our communities, what one of the desires of this committee was to maintain the historic cultural vibrancy. When you kick us out, when you kick out the tienditas, when you, you know, when you raise communities, that's genocide. That's cultural genocide. We're watching and we're holding the city staff because you know what, these people, Thank you, they're also being used. And I hold you, though, task force members, because I believe in you. I, we need to hear you speak out and we need you to hold the city staff accountable to your plan. Thank you, Gretchen. Is there anyone who did not have an opportunity to speak yet who wants to speak? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. If you will just give us your name, sir. I'm Gilbert Murillo. I'm past president of the uh, Government Hill uh, Alliance. Uh, how much time do I have? Three minutes, sir. <laughs> Uh, I, I want to speak directly to the issue, but first a little introduction. I've been around for a while, quite a while, and one of the honors I've had was to serve uh, in formulating the uh, present com uh, city council uh, composition of 10 warm districts. That was in 1977. 
Uh, since then, I've seen a lot of these kind of things happening. In Mexico, during the 60s, we used to call it the Gran Pronuncion. That means we make a statement and things are going to happen. And, you know, we put it on the shelves and things just don't happen. And you come back and you ask people, well, you know, what's going on? Oh, I thought y'all took care of it. No, the city made this study and the city has the books on the shelves. And I can name three or four of them. The elderly uh, uh, study, the study of the Office of Historic Preservation. A quarter of a million dollars for each study. That's my introduction. And what I'm saying is to me, what we're doing tonight is a top-down kind of structure, a top-down planning. And it looks good on paper, and you know, maybe some good things will happen, but it'll be forgotten given the new priorities of the city and the, and the city of San Antonio. So I'd like to speak directly to the issue, and that's that in Government Hill is typical of what's going on. Our people are getting letters being badgered by developers. They buy the $40,000, $50,000 homes and then they flip it. Just today I took a look at something happening on Willow and uh, Carson, a house that was, I would say, worth $60,000 a year or two ago is being sold for one eighty-two thousand dollars today, 1440 Willow. And this is an example. I've also seen things happening in San Antonio. And basically, it's a, the idea is the right to the city. Where, who is really going to protect the people who need protection? The long-time residential owners. That's the issue. That's the issue. And unless we really push, push, push the city, particularly to the city council level, things will not get done. So I'm saying the, the plan is fine. It's going to be forgotten unless we really get together, talk with each Thank one you, another, and push for real change. Thank you. Please give us your name. Amelia Valdez. I was, I think the last one, last time. Um, I'm also a Esperanza staff. Uh, I've also been doing block walks in the neighborhood uh, pretty much since last year. I want to invite every task force member to come out and see how the areas operate conversations that are taking place between these individuals so you can hear them out. We are at a displacement uh, place when the house is knocked down. Uh, we are part to see, and I know some of you are, I'm familiar with, I know some of you, but I want to invite you this Saturday to come out and see my part of the neighborhood, born and raised in the west side of San Antonio, I live in front of Casiano Park, where if you have to come rent a pavilion at Casiano Park, you have to pay $200. It would be nice. We, we can take the $200. I will give it to you if the toilets were clean, if the drugs were out of there, if the pavilion was clean, okay? If you have electricity, if the, cut, if the grass was cut, if at least you give them a reason, because when they come to my house to ask me for electricity, when they come to my house to use the restroom, because this is not provided, okay? Um, I think it's kind of sad that you're taking monies and you're not providing what you, they need to be given. I also heard a rumor that um, Mayor Ira Taylor did not want us to come tonight to the east side only because I guess um, talking to individuals I gave 20 years to the east side providing youth development to the east side neighborhood 
Um, I don't know, uh, as far as task force members, if that's true, uh, but I made it a point to come and talk not only about the west side, but the east side also, where um, we had a lot of uh, things going on in certain areas. But I do want to say this, I want to invite all task members, whoever shows up on Saturday morning, 1635 Potosi, I can show you what, what happens. Um, and yes, we're tired. We're so tired sometimes. I can't sleep at night because I have to be watching your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Hudi Vega. Um, I know some of the people here, but I am here today as a lifelong inner city resident um, and I'm here on behalf of my family and specifically my mother, who is a, um, an amputee on dialysis with congestive heart failure, who's very ill. And she owns a house in a neighborhood near downtown and she, we are harassed weekly we get letters it started with letters we were inundated with letters from developers from other states we have had people come and knock on the door to look for my mother to offer to buy her house um you know and it's getting to the point that every week we get people knocking on our door looking for my mother so I also had the great fortune to live in other communities and to live in other um, inner city communities of color Harlem near downtown LA. So I've observed this process before, but it's hitting really home. It's hitting hard, it's hitting home. I grew up in a neighborhood where people, people had so standard housing. I mean, half the people I grew up with have lead, had lead poisoning grown up. I just, you know, that's, that is, nobody could afford to fix their house. Nobody still can afford to fix their house. And so it, we really need, we need policy changes, we need funding, we need, we need people to be able to live with dignity. And you know, we're urban pioneers, but we've been here from the beginning and we deserve that respect um, to get that ability to continue to live and to be able to live in dignity like we haven't been able to live before. Thank you. We have time for one more speaker. If there's anyone left who has not already spoken, who signed up, or who didn't have an opportunity to sign up. You signed up yesterday, did you not? Uh, buenas tardes. Uh, yo me registré, pero porque trabajo, llegué tarde. Sí. Mi nombre, es nombre por favor? Sa mi nombre es Araceli Herrera. OK, gracias. Sí. Uh, bueno, yo quiero decir, lo primero que quiero preguntar es, ¿se encuentra la mayor de la ciudad? ¿Vino a escucharlo? ¿Y por qué permitimos esta humillación? ¿Por qué no nos fuimos? ¿Por qué no se burla de nosotros de esa manera? ¿Cómo vamos a estar seguros que van a hacer caso de nuestras palabras? ¿Que van a hacer lo que necesitamos? ¿Que nos van a escuchar? ¿Que no nos van a desalojar? Si las personas que tienen poder no están aquí. Sí, ellos tienen poder, se los agradezco y los respeto, pero la mayor debe de estar aquí enfrentando este problema. Párense y griten que queremos que esté la mayor, que exijamos que esté la mayor, porque esto, señores, no es un juego, es nuestra comunidad, es nuestra vida. ¿Con cuántos sacrificios compramos una casa? Enterramos el ombligo en ese lugar, cada hijo de nosotros que ha nacido en cada árbol, en cada planta, se encuentra eh, nuestro ombligo enterrado. No somos cualquier gente, señores, no somos cualquier gente que se mueve nada más de aquí para allá. No, señores, nuestra raza tiene tradiciones, tiene cultura, tiene orgullo. ¿Qué pasa? ¿Por qué no protestaron? ¿Por qué no se fueron? ¿Por qué ahorita no se paran y protestan y exigen que esté aquí la mayor? Y que si la siguiente reunión no está, vámonos, que no se burlen de nosotros, porque les vuelvo a repetir, nosotros valemos mucho, porque precisamente esas personas que han invertido, quieren invertir en dinero aquí, están aquí en la ciudad, tienen la ambición por nuestra tierra, ¿y saben por qué? Porque adoran nuestras tradiciones, nuestra comida, nuestro colorido, la rosca de reyes, el mole, los aguacates, Gracias. 
manera, por eso tiene la visión de este lugar, por la tierra, por nuestro colorido, no lo vamos a permitir. Precisamente, ustedes también tienen sus tradiciones, ustedes también tienen cosas en el Isai, a donde lo han marcado como el barrio más peligroso de la ciudad, el barrio donde hay prostitución y droga. ¿Pero por qué? Porque no recibimos buenos salarios, salarios dignos, porque nos humillan, porque nos explotan, porque nos dan migajas, miserias. Ahora van a venir ricos todavía de que nos explotan, de que nos roban la vida. Gracias, señora. No lo vamos a permitir, señores. Hay que seguir luchando y exigir. Gracias, señora. Que venga esa señora. Y no vamos a dejar que nos roben nuestra tierra. Ya hay tiempo, señora. Así como tiene mucho dinero para comprarnos, que inviertan dinero en nuestros barrios, en parques, en cosas que les iban a los jóvenes y a los estudiantes. Y no que nos roben nada más y nos roben. Gracias, señora. To wrap up the meeting, I'd like to hand the meeting back to Jackie Gorman from the Mayor's Task Force. So thank you all for coming out this evening. We heard some really interesting things. I learned a lot. I took a lot of notes. I hope that you all heard some things that you didn't know, heard some things that made you think about things a little differently. The only way that things get better is if we talk to each other as neighbors, is if we continue to exchange information and try to find that common ground. But I, I do want to correct a misconception, though. There were two that I really think we need to correct. Seniors were represented and had very vocal advocates as part of our task force. Two of them are, si three of them are sitting right over there. You know, they, they, they held us to a standard and kept saying, what about our seniors? What about our seniors? So they, were, they, they did that and did it well. The other part is, from the very first meeting that this task force held, task force members asked staff, where was the public input? We have been advocating for opportunities to hear from our fellow citizens on these issues since the very beginning. So you may not have seen it in one of the draft reports. I can't tell you why or why not, but I can only tell you that from the very beginning, we wanted to have these public meetings. So thank you so much for coming out today. Thank you for having the courage to stand at that microphone and let us know what you thought. Thank you for, for being patient and for being considerate to your fellow citizens and listening to them even when maybe you didn't agree with them because we all have a right to our opinion. Now, what you do with your opinion, that's totally up to you, but it's yours and you have the right to have it. So thank you so much. I hope you will come out again to the town hall meeting. These meetings are being recorded. We will capture everything that you said and we will try to incorporate that in the work that we do. We got some really good suggestions. I really like that suggestion about having a place where people could go online and provide input. And I know that's a question that I'm gonna ask. So we are catching this stuff. So thank you so much and have a great evening.